Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and this is a deep dive video jumping into the Composition AI tool, which is just super fun, super fantastic. I use it all the time and I think it's one of the great, great things about Luminar AI. Let's get into it. Here's my photo. I've already done some edits to the photo using some of the basic tools. I have not used Composition AI. We're going to dive into that here, but I was able to take the photo from that to that in a couple of minutes with a couple of tools here simply because I couldn't stand looking at it when it looked like that. It was too dark, there were spots in the sky, the colors were off. I did a little bit of an edit. I don't really know that this is a full edit and I don't really care, that's not what it's about. I just had to make it kind of presentable for the video. So here we go, Composition AI, as I said, is one of the new things in Luminar AI and it basically allows you to get better control over the vertical lines, the straightening, the, the cropping or the aspect ratio, things like that. So there's a number of different components to this tool. We're gonna jump into those. Um, if you look at the top, I'm just gonna go down in order, right? If you look at the top, you start with Composition AI and that's actually a button. You can click that and it will analyze the photo using AI and make a decision what it thinks should be the crop. Now, in this case, it didn't really hit it 100% because it cut off some of that flagpole. But the good thing is you can move this around. So I could go like that, in which case that looks really good, to be honest. Or I think it was something like that. You could actually just drag the, uh, the corner and expand that. So it's maintaining the original aspect ratio, but it is cropping in. So that's something that you can do. You can always hit reset with this arrow up here at the top, which is what I'm gonna do now, and then show you some more options that you have. Okay, so Composition AI, that hot button, whatever you wanna call it, uh, as I said, it'll suggest a crop. I tend personally just to prefer to crop it myself. I'm just kind of that kind of uh, photographer. And you have all the different aspect ratios here. So you have free, which is basically an unlocked aspect ratio. And what that means is you can drag any of these sides uh, to any degree that you want and crop freely, which means it does not stick to any standard aspect ratio. It's a free crop. So you can just move these things around. Uh, in this case, whoops, I don't want to take that much of the top off, but I definitely want to drop some of that bottom, too much grass for me. And so there, you can do something like that. Um, and that's a free crop. Um, you can always just go back to the original aspect ratio. Uh, transposed is basically the opposite of the aspect ratio that your uh, photo is in. So this is a, let me go back to original. This was shot with a full frame Nikon uh, uh, many years ago and full frame as well as crop sensor cameras shoot in a two by three aspect ratio. So this is two by three. So transposed just means three by two. So instead of like three across and two down, it's basically two across and three up. As you can see, it's basically taking the aspect ratio and flipping it. Now I'll go back to original and you have all these other ones, right? So square, which doesn't really work here. Uh, it's not that kind of photo, but that's popular like with Instagram. Instagram, for example, all the different ones, as well as like four thirds, which would be like a micro four thirds camera, Olympus or Panasonic come to mind. Um, and that's the aspect ratio for them. My favorite, which you've, uh, if you've seen my videos before, you know, I like 16 by nine quite a bit. I think it works great in a lot of my photos, uh, primarily because I've shot so many photos over the years with a wider angle lens. Um, when I had an icon, I was shooting with the 14 to 24 wide angle. With my Sony, I shoot a lot with the 20 millimeter. Both of those are fairly wide, which means I end up oftentimes with a lot of like empty real estate. Scenes like this, let me hit uh, back to the original aspect ratio. Scenes like this with a wide angle, there's nothing in the foreground to really anchor the photo. And so when I come in to, and basically change my aspect ratio, I'm thinking of that like this. I like the photo, but it's just a lot of dead space in the foreground. 16 by nine allows me to kind of get rid of that because the foreground is kind of like your eye might be led into the photo through the foreground and up to the castle. Empty foreground is kind of boring. If there was like a, a bench or a person or something there to kind of anchor that, that would be a different story. But that's why I use 16 by nine. I'm not saying it's a better aspect ratio than others. It just fits my photos quite a bit. So you see me doing that quite a bit. I'm gonna go back to the original one. Um, the other thing too is this button here just allows you to do that same transpose. The other nice thing, you have Facebook cover or Facebook feed. So if you're sharing your photos on Facebook, That'll uh, default to those aspect ratios and you can enter a custom ratio if you would like to. Anyway, you have that ability. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to original so that that stays put. But that section of Composition AI is very powerful, very useful, and something that I personally use on every photo. 
Next up is the perspective section. This left-hand side is basically to automatically straighten your photo, and this right-hand side is to correct the verticals in a photo. Let's do the straighten first. If you click on that, you can see it looks at the photo and it bases it on a horizon line and basically tries to straighten the photo accordingly. Um, I think a lot of the time it does a pretty good job if you've got a fairly uh, defined horizon. I think in this case, it actually didn't do a great job. I think I would probably straighten it something more about like that. So while that tool can be useful, I don't find that it's uh, perfect on every photo, but regardless, you have the ability to come over here and just if your uh, mouse is on the outside here, you can adjust accordingly so you can straighten to your heart's content or adjust it as you see fit. I'm gonna go with that for now. And then the vertical perspective correction, this one is amazing. I did a video all about that. It is an incredibly powerful tool. You could have done this in Luminar 4 with the lens and geometry tools, but you had all these sliders, and honestly, it took a while. Whereas with this tool, you literally click it once, and your verticals pop up straight. I think that's powerful and amazing. In this case, I would say it's probably a little overdone, and that's where you can jump down here, and these tie in along with that perspective correction. I use that as my first go, and I would say about seven or eight times out of 10, it's perfect, and I'm done. But you know, 15, 20% of the time or something like that, I can come down here and make a few further adjustments if I need to. In this case, I think I do. So with the vertical slider, this will impact the vertical perspective. And so if I go to the right, you'll see what happens. That's kind of dragging the bottom forward. And if I go to the left, it's kind of dragging the top forward. So this is a situation where I would come in and every photo is different. I would just move the sliders around a little bit. I think at three, those lines look pretty good and this overlay grid here, which is kind of the rule of thirds grid. I always use these lines as a comparison, and to me, that line there and that pole look like they are perfectly straight. This line here looks like it's also straight right alongside those windows, so I think that vertical perspective correction, it, I got a long way with the automatic version, and then I'm able to use the vertical one to adjust that further. So in other words, those two sections go together quite well. You also have horizontal perspective correction. So as I drag that to the left, you will see that kind of bumps up that left side, brings that forward a little bit, which I actually like a little bit of that in this photo. I think that helps because those flags to me are kind of the anchoring element. It's bringing them forward a little bit. I think that looks nice. If I go to the right, I'm kind of doing that with the other side. And so you, again, this is every photo is different. There's not a you know one size fits all, click here, you're done every time. I would say that perspective correction, as I said, majority of the time does a perfect job, but there are oftentimes, you know, 15, 20% of the time, like I said, where I come in and I make a few minor adjustments here um, with the vertical and horizontal sliders. I think I would do something like that in this photo. I think that looks nice. So putting these all together, you get a lot of power and a lot of control over your photo. Now you can use these tools here in combination with the aspect ratio changes up here. I'll do that in a second. But speaking of aspect ratio, this basically corrects for horizontal or vertical aspect ratio distortion. So I can go like that if I need to go one way or that to go another. So if you get a little bit of distortion, like going a little bit left here actually looks okay in this photo. To the right does not look good because it kind of squishes it, right? But if I go to the left, it's kind of elongating the photo. I think that looks pretty good like that, to be honest. So, so far, I'm quite happy with how that's operating. Now, you've got this section here, rotate and flip, which I skipped over because I wanted to show how the perspective correction here with the auto straightening and particularly the verticals can tie in with the what they call image 3D transform section down below the vertical, horizontal, and aspect. Those can be used in tandem, especially with this perspective, this vertical correction, to get your lines and all that lined up just perfectly in your photo. But don't forget you have this rotate and flip section. Actually, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and crop this to 16 by nine, which is my preference, and you can see what I've got there. I think I've got a pretty good looking photo. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and apply that to my photo. So there you go, and now that I've done that and got my photo set, this is rotate and flip. So this is not necessarily something I would use in this photo, but I just wanna show you what you can do. Sometimes you have photos where you need to move things, right? So this rotate and flip, we'll just do that. As you can see, as I'm clicking around, it's just moving it around, you know, basically 90 degrees at a time. So up, side, down, and back around. This one will flip the photo around 
which actually doesn't look so bad in this photo, but there are photos where you might want to do that. Some of them, it's not going to work, but some of them, flipping it around like that makes for an interesting change to a photo, especially if it's a landscape or something that's not as you know concrete, no pun intended with the fact that there's concrete in this photo, but when something that's a little bit more, you know, could potentially be fluid, I guess, I think of landscapes, maybe portraits, you could flip that around as well. Um, experiment with that in your photos if you think it's necessary. And in this case, this is not something I would do in this photo, but you may see photos where people shoot reflections in a puddle and then they invert the image with the reflection on the top and the actual live component of the photo, if you will, on the bottom. That would be a situation where you might could use this component of a composition AI. In other words, for me, this section is more creative and, and, and less utilitarian, for lack of a better word. It's something fun. It's something you can apply to photos. The point is you can do that. So we've covered Composition AI, the automatic tool here. We've covered the aspect ratio and all those different components. We've just covered rotate and flip, and then we covered image 3D transform and the three sliders here, and in particular, how they tie in to the perspective correction section here. So all told, this tool gives you a lot of power and control over your photo. So let me show you what we started with. That's what my photo looked like. Now, again, I did, took some spots out. As you can see, I took a bird out. I brightened the photo. I adjusted the colors and the light a little bit. But mostly, if you look at the verticals and that sort of thing, you can see that we've come a long way. And I love that about this tool because, as I said, so many of my photos are taken with a wide-angle lens. And I've always got these verticals that I need to fix. And I'm generally always cropping as well. Both of those, the cropping and the vertical fixes, are due to me shooting with a wide angle lens. Comes in really handy on anything like that, as well as some creative options as I talked about, but that's how Composition AI works. Hope it gives you a sense of the power of these tools. Really useful, really great to have, really fun, and frankly, really easy. That's my deep dive on Composition AI. Hope it helps my friends. Thank you for watching, sticking around, coming back, hanging out, all that stuff. I appreciate it. Have fun editing out there. I'll see you in the next video, and adios.